Welcome back to the Bee Cave Book Hall. We are here with a special, special guest um, who is our first patron interview about the new books that are here in the library. I'm Kate Sweeney, and I'm here with Ryan Bear, and she has lots of new titles to talk to us about. Thanks for having me, and I'm really excited to be here and share some of my favorite reads that I've gotten to experience recently, and so I'm excited to get going. Awesome. You're the most voracious reader I know of all of our patrons, and pretty much every time I see Ryan, which is pretty often because she's a friend and a patron, I ask her, why are you not a librarian? Because she reads so much and she has so many good things to say about books. So I'm here. I'm excited to hear what you have to say today. I'm passionate about uh, the things that I've been reading, but also just sharing those with people. I think ultimately because there are a lot of authors out there who deserve to be read and shared and the things that they're writing right now are important and relevant. And I think the more that you can get them out in circulation, the better it is for your patrons and ultimately humans, kind of. Oh, uh, totally. Because it's it's not just vampires and werewolves and teen angst. It's about things that are deeper and more important. And raising humans myself, I want to raise good humans. And part of that is having kind and compassionate and Um, and heartfelt literature to to raise them with. Awesome. What gems have you been reading recently then? So my first favorite that I read recently, I I took a break from young adult fiction because I felt like it was starting to get a little saturated with sort of the teenage angst and relationships and existentialist sorts of crises. A List of Cages is by Robin Rowe, and she's actually a counselor for adolescents and at-risk youth. This book is about foster care. One of the main characters has ADHD, so it's about how he manages that, as well as having a mom who is a social worker, and one of the other main characters is a child that came to live with them and was in foster care. I don't want to give away too much. It is absolutely a book that deserves to be read. I was in tears. A few of the reviews I read on book, uh, excuse me, on Goodreads, the the other readers were in tears within the first few pages. The voices in this book reminded me a lot of those in uh, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Oh, so yeah. So for, for your Great readers one. who enjoyed that book and if they watch the movie, this is a good one uh, for those. Oh, uh, fabulous. Those readers. Yeah, that's a lot of topics to take on. Foster care, social work. And I feel like in general, youth literature specifically through teen is taking on a lot of mental issues that, you know, youth are facing. ADHD or, you know, kind of unusual syndromes and stuff like that that maybe don't get as much attention. Um, Like you said, raising humans and kind of just all the different things we deal with. So it sounds like there's a lot going on there. It sounds really interesting. And I think this is a debut novel, so it's pretty ambitious for her to take on. And I think what's important about this book too is that it isn't like you were saying just kind of your typical run of the mill young adult fiction these days. It's it's important. It's written for those kids who feel like there aren't books written for them. And I hope that there are young adult readers out there who pick this up and and can see themselves in it mm-hmm. instead of picking up a book and thinking like this isn't for me, but this book there's a little of something for everyone in this book, and I, I hope that even if they can't see themselves in these characters, that they're able to maybe in some way like recognize someone that they go to school with and be a little bit more compassionate. Yeah, um, empathy. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally. Well, and it's gotten a lot of starred reviews from multiple um, professional journals and things like that, so another ringing endorsement. That's going to have to make my short list now. What else do you have for us? Behind Her Eyes is another one that I read recently. This is kind of my go-to genre, uh, psychological thrillers. I didn't know that about you. Yes. Wow. What's ironic about that is that I don't like being scared, and I despise scary movies. This is the funniest thing. I get the nervous giggles in movies. Even the cover is kind of frightening. The eye, it's like a really close-up of an eye. Yes, and I picked it up, and I put it down, and I was like, yeah, I'm not sure about this one. But it sucked me in, like, within the first two, maybe two chapters. And what's interesting about this book is that it's written from two different perspectives. So it's alternating narrators. One is, her name is Adele, and it's the wife of the therapist that Louise, who is the other narrator, 
that she works for. To share anything about this book would be to give away kind of Ooh, okay, happens. yes, don't then. Um, yes. In the reviews on Goodreads, too, that I read after, one of the hashtags that they have is something about the end is a hashtag about the ending. Oh, no! So, yeah. Oh, in a good way. Oh, like, oh okay. It doesn't that, give something like, away. what okay. the heck happened with oh, the Oh, okay, okay. So it's kind of, it's one of those books that I texted my best friend after I finished it, and I said, what just happened? <laughs> so it's, I... That's good you had someone to book club with mm-hmm. about it. I, I hate it when I finish a book like that, and I just am alone with my thoughts about it and just want the world to talk to me and process what just happened. Absolutely. That's awesome. Okay. is I don't know whether or not I can handle this one. It definitely won't be a nightstand read, but I might be able to handle it in the broad daylight mm-hmm. of my lunch break. I do have books like that where all the lights have to be on in the house or it needs to be before it starts to get dark and someone has to be home while yeah. writing it. Yeah. So. You're like, I have to be a little more comfortable. Yes. And you have another thriller for us, right? Yes. I See You by Claire McIntosh. She also wrote I Let You Go, which was one of my favorite books from a few years ago. She is another really great, I I believe they're both from the UK, both she and the author of Behind Her Eyes. That's another, I kind of gravitate toward authors in the UK. British um, More of the psychological thrillers. Uh Um, Oh, they're so good with mystery. I mean, the Brits have just a handle on the pacing and suspense. Yes. Um, so I See You is just written from one point of view, but what's interesting about it is that between each chapter, you get to see kind of a glimpse of the antagonist in, in the book, and it's not very much. It's like only a paragraph or two, but there are absolutely some moments in the book where you're like, what just happened? Because it there are peaks and valleys, and the peaks are very frightening peaks in oh my this gosh. one. Yeah. So which one do you think is scarier between the two? Or are they just too different? They're really different. Behind her eyes kind of leads you on a psychological goose chase, if you will. Mm-hmm. I see you seems very realistic. So for me, I see you is a little bit scarier because uh-huh. it, because it is so realistic. You can picture yourself in that situation. Mm-hmm. Yikes. So do you have some books that you haven't read yet, but you um, just saw on our new cart? Or Yes. So I have a few. The first is Close Enough to Touch by Colleen Oakley. She also wrote Before I Go. So Close Enough to Touch is about a woman who is allergic to, I believe she's allergic to human touch. And so she's a recluse of sorts. Interesting. Part of the appeal to me is the cover. But also if you read Before I Go, which was her last book, it's kind of a love story of sorts. That's not really my genre. I don't gravitate toward romance and love and that sort of thing. But I think that sometimes authors can do it in a in a way that is really realistic and not hearts and rainbows and and all of that. So she, I think she's a really talented author. I wouldn't classify her as chiclet. Mm-hmm. necessarily but I really look forward to reading this one I actually have it checked out right now it's really good I'm very intrigued by that premise alone whether or not there's a romance mixed in I don't think I need one <laughs> and it looks like you have one more for us yes Goodbye Days by Jeff Zentner I haven't read anything by him but he's also an author of young adult fiction I'm going to turn it over to you because you have more interesting facts about Jeff Well, Zentner. I was telling Ryan right before we started that I got a copy of The Serpent King in the Mail from my brother who lives back east, and it just kind of came out of the blue. He doesn't normally send me books. So, of course, I read it, and it was an interesting book. It was a debut novel, kind of small town life, kids kind of trying to break out of their situations and kind of grow up and be who they want to be. Anyway, my brother just... After I read the book, several la- months later, mentioned something about how, oh yeah, I know him, so that's why I sent you his book. And I, so I finally, when I saw this book on your reading list, to read list, and when it came across my new cart, I finally texted my brother and followed up about that. So you know this author who goes to the Texas Teen Book Festival that's super well known, and apparently they know each other from some online message board. I guess it doesn't even exist anymore. I don't know what that means. It started in 2005. And the thing that he told me that was really interesting about this author is that he apparently writes a lot of his books on his iPhone as he commutes to work as an attorney. 
So a lot of interesting things just in that one concept. First of all, why an iPhone? That seems very cumbersome, but maybe that's just a good medium for him. And I'm assuming he's commuting on a train because don't text and drive, Jeff Sentner. Anyway, that he's an attorney, which you wouldn't necessarily expect from a YA author. Ironically, you mentioned texting and driving. That's what this book is about. Actually. Oh, mm-hmm. I haven't even read it. But yes. Oh my gosh, how... So it's young adult, wow. fi- it's young adult fiction. I guess the, you see the little ellipse yeah, on the, the cover. The yeah. main character is, I believe what happens is he's texting and it ends up, and I'm not giving away any information. This is just in the front of the book. His three best friends die as a result of him texting. And so the grandmother of one of the best friends asks him to participate in sort of the memorial services. And I think that this book might be sort of about how how everyone says goodbye in their own way and how oh, the wow. decisions that how the decisions that people make ultimately have kind of a an impact on like a snowball effect. Mm-hmm. Sadly, I think that I know I'm guilty of it and mm-hmm. it's one thing I try to do with the hands-free driving. Yeah. Especially like teenagers and distracted driving. And oh yeah. So it's unfortunately another timely sort of piece of literature because it's realistic and so hopefully I hope it will give people some conviction about the things that they're doing while they're driving and and I know now with little ones in the car that I'm a lot more mindful of just focusing on being present and that's interesting I didn't realize I I should have known because the cover definitely cues it I mean there's sort of a cracked looking cover like a cracked windshield and then like a message bubble that looks like somebody's about to write something. It's a very foreboding cover now that I know that the the topic and I can see him handling that really well because his The Serpent King definitely what he did so well with that book in my opinion is that he had so much about sort of the inner dialogue of each character and kind of how they were coming to terms with different things in their lives. So I can totally see that playing out in this book. Okay, that's on my short list too. I have too many to read. Anyway, thanks so much again for coming, Ryan Bear. We hope to have you back. With all of these books that you've recommended, we are definitely going to be having a happy book day, which is how we always end this podcast. Happy book day, y'all. Thanks for having me. The BK Book Hall is part of the BK Public Library's podcast channel. It is produced and edited by Megan Fisher. Thanks to the friends of the BK Public Library for the donation of our podcast equipment. For more information, go to www.bktexas.com. Please feel free to email us or leave any comments and suggestions below. We'd love to hear from you.